What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very, very excited today to be joined by Danny and Mara Vega, who are actually affectionately known as the Fat Fuel family. Guys, how are you? Dude, it's so great. good to be with you, man. It's, it's probably the best part of my day so far. Yeah, so far. It's been a crappy day, so it's actually <laughs> been, it's nice right now. Yep. Be it's here. amazing to have both of you. Your energy is off the charts. Um, let me give you guys a little bit of bio. Um, Danny um, is an ex- clinical strength and conditioning specialist. He worked for, um, I know you were, uh, not Dayton, uh, University of Florida. Yeah, at VCU. Right? And yep. VCU, right. I forgot, VCU. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Danny and I actually met at Ben's gym um, in Tampa. What, last year? It's t- time flies. Probably a year and a half, two years. Yeah, yeah, almost two years ago. Yeah, you're right. Almost two years ago. And, um, you know, obviously I've been following him. I've done a podcast with these guys for their amazing podcast. I met both of them. Uh, I met Danny, like I said, about almost two years ago. And then I met his wife through Danny, of course, about nine or 10 months ago. And then we just recently done a podcast and their podcast has not run yet, which I'm very excited to not wait for that one soon. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, But we're here today in a fucked up world. (laughs) Yep. We have COVID-19 and whatever that fiasco is, you know, there's so many different ways we can go about it. (laughs) Obviously, I want to talk to you guys about your family and your mission. Uh, but I'm, we're going to go different directions here today. So first yeah. and foremost, as I always do on this podcast, you know, just talk a little bit about how you got here talking to me today. Well, I mean, dude, first of all, like we were talking about before we got on the air is that I feel like it's so much more prevalent and so much more noticeable nowadays when you interact with people. It's like everything, the volume is turned up on everything. Mm-hmm. So people who would be repugnant to me are they smell i smell them from further away right. and people who who we vibe with we just we're, we we yeah, know it's like it we got to stay close now yeah so you and i met at the gym um we recorded a podcast 7 months ago yep. and it was me by myself cuz mauda had to leave town we lost the audio i hid from you for a few months <laughs> Finally came fine, back. Then I, I was able to be on the show. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> it worked out perfect. Yeah, between yeah. my legs, and I was like, dude, I had your page open, like a, a, a link open, because I didn't want to exit out and just, you know, kill it finally and of say course. that yeah. it was not coming back. But we recorded, and and um, we've had so many conversations, and now we're talking today about what's going on, and uh, I'm really excited about it because, you know. We, we talk about keto and nutrition and I mean, even but that plays a part. All of it plays a part. You're right. All of this stuff plays a part. Yeah. All of it. The parenting, like all of this goes back to the same, like we just think the same about, about everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it all kind of plays a part to be honest. It does. Keto, parenting, the if fact that my kids eat- don't go to school. I mean, all of it plays a part really. Yeah. If you're not eating the right way, your brain's not going to work well. If you're, you know, going to school every day and getting all your information from the media, then you're not going to think right. I mean, all of this is, is all part of the same package. It's like a multi-pronged attack on, you know, rational thinking, cautious, consciousness in general. Like there's so much going on right. and we're over here with like little pieces of gum trying to put out every single little um, yeah. leak that comes out in the dam. Um, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to, to your point, and, and it's funny because I, I just thought of this as you were saying that they are attacking us from like every conceivable angle. Mm-hmm. If we really go back, guys, 100 years and we start in World War I in that time period and even with the founding of the Federal Reserve, they've always been attacking us, you know, financially, physically. But back then, the physical attacks were not the way they are today, right? They were sending us off to war to die. Right. Yep. That was how they thinned the herd, controlled and shaped. And they called it the Great War. Even people now to this day call it the Great War, and it was exactly. the biggest tragedy. It's what led to World War II and everything else. Exactly. And then subsequently, but now, fast forward to now, to what you were just saying, and obviously I talk about this in all my books and my podcasts, but it's a, 
it's a war from an environmental with like multi prong, right? Like the food, the air, the water, like everything, everything. is tainted everything. and poisoned. Everything. So they don't need to send us off to war, right? Because instead they could just make us fat, sick, and flame. Sick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Dependent on their drugs that they sell us that have other side effects that then cause other drugs to be, you know, consumed. To yep. where, as I always say, I think Danny, you and I said this on the first podcast, which it's just coming back to me. <laughs> like they literally they poison us physically and soul wise, which we're gonna get to later in this podcast. But as we get to the end of our life, they literally will they run you out of money by the drugs, right? You think yep. of the old people, they got 20, 25 pills they take and they're already fat, morbidly obese, again, inflamed. And then they die because they go bankrupt and they can't afford the drugs anymore to keep them alive. Yep. 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 There's so many, there's so many ways that, that we're under attack. It's so true. Like, and, yep. and now more than ever, like you really gotta, like, you gotta go back to first principles. Like, what do you really believe in? Do you believe in freedom? Is it for real freedom or this fake freedom? Well, it's that clear just, that a lot of people believe in fake freedom. Apparently, yeah, of course. Because nobody wants freedom right now. No. <laughs> yeah. So, so define what you guys consider fake freedom. Well, it would just be any freedom that would end at the beginning of whatever the next right. There's an exception. Is. There's yeah. an exception. Right? Except for if, when except freedom of, here. Yeah, freedom of speech. Except for when you offend people. Freedom of to move about and commerce and all that, unless it's it, it poses a risk. And you know, freedom to to even walk through a store. Dude, they have one way aisles in Walmart. You know, I purposely went the wrong way right so now because I. I am like the biggest rebel and I'm like- I was like, waiting for you guys to say, you mean fake freedom, like wearing a mask and gloves in your car? In your car, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And people are so offended at the, even the thought of questioning it. Like they're just, you see them, they're like, you did that. You went through the red, they put this red stop sign in the aisle. By the way, a woman followed me yesterday when I went through the aisle. She went behind me like like she she was like you know what right, you're out. I don't have to go through the green light and go to the other aisle and go around. Where Danny and I just to, so you know, <laughs> we do this a lot because I, you know we we go to Disney a lot. We 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 do things with the kids, and we have for years wherever the crowd is going, we purposely go the opposite. Of course, yeah, purposely like yeah. Lit, every time. I don't even know. I'm like okay, just okay. Just, to your guys' point, <laughs> I've not told anybody this. This happened two nights ago, and I have a picture because Monica took a picture of it to document. And by the way, my daughters are with my ex. Thank God they're spending time with them in Vegas right now. She's taking them for two weeks. By the way, Vegas, you guys, that entire city is gone. Gone. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. It's closed it's forever. Yeah, it's it's toast. All those people. Anyway, wow. they're there. So we went to Sprouts. And as like you guys, I will not wear a mask. Yeah. I, I will not it's do it. Safe. But I had to safe. wear a mask. To go into Sprouts. Yeah, they make. Now, here's the deal at Sprouts. I'm not kidding you. Speaking of what you were saying with the things, they literally make. There's two security guards, right, to make sure you're wearing a mask at the door, and they're rat cops. But I, <laughs> I, I walk in, and Monica's in front of me, and she's got a bandana. We don't even have them, and I've got like the one yeah, or two masks that we have because somebody on my uh, daughter's soccer team made them and just gave them to us. So anyway, it's like this fake black mask I have over my face, and as I go to grab a cart. The security guard is like, no, no, bro. And he comes over to me. He's like about to grab me. And I literally look at him. I said, if you touch me, there's going to be problems. Just like that. You know, he's like this tall. And he's like, man, well, you're not allowed. I'm, you're not allowed. I'm like, you could have just said, I can't touch this. Because it's policy that you can only touch the cleanly, you know, cart, right? So oh, I mean, they got to clean it. Dude, I shit you not. I looked at the guy. I was just like, look, dude, don't touch me. You know, because yeah. he was going to grab me. I mean, he was like coming after me like a Nazi. Like I had just broke. But he's going to break social distancing, which is hysterical. Dude. So, so literally I walked in there and, and the, the, the manager of the store knows me and Monica because we buy the Icelandic water from them. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah, they have it there. So he's in the back. And as I walk in, I pull it down and he's just like, he laughs you know, loud, like for me to hear him. Cause we know each other. And he's like, yeah. it's cool, man. Like it's cool. Right. Cause they know us, but I'm thinking like all these people are walking through the store. Like you guys said, completely giving up their rights. Nope. Yeah. They don't, they don't have a problem. Yeah, and with they, it. and the worst part about it is what I wrote today. I, I made a post today on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, and no. it was about this, like this thing that Ryan holiday wrote this article five years ago about 
Fahrenheit 451. And, and it was right at the time when like the safe spaces were coming up and you yeah. couldn't say things because you were going <laughs> to offend people. And the colleges and universities are like the birthing places for all of these fragile oh humans. And they were talking about how he had this misconception of what the message in the book was. And so did I. It was, we thought that it was government tyranny. And don't get me wrong. Like I said in my post in Facebook, I said, I still think 99% of the, the people in government are vile and repugnant and a threat, but it's your neighbor. It's your cousin. It's your, your, your mom. It's your, it's the person that like someone just told me. I I've literally have my, this. my a family member, you know, oh, we know literally yeah. attacking me right now. Yeah. Like, like won't stop bothering me. Won't stop emailing me. Uh, you know, this five-year-old died. This like literally shaming me because I, all I said was I was not going to wear a mask because right. I don't want to breathe my recycle there. That's not good for you. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I mean, what is the purpose of my life is to exactly. help others get healthy, which is hilarious. Guys. We've been talking about this since before people like, told you to wash your hands and wear a mask. We wanted to be healthy before you guys pretended to care Even about knew your what health. It meant. Right. Yep. Right. So it's yeah. just really well, they're going to really love us by the time we get to the end of this podcast. Because, <laughs> oh, they're going to. Once we tell people the reality of what's coming, like this is nothing. As you guys know, I, I do want to talk nice. a little bit about keto carnivore and metabolic flexibility just to say we were on task for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to get back to that. But, you know, to, to give you guys a lot of credit, I mean, Danny has, I mean, this is just coming from me, total bro love. Danny has one of the best physiques, I think, in the whole fitness industry. Like, I mean, I've seen, you know, some of your Instagram pictures and stuff like that. And I've seen when you were working, you know, with Mark White and those guys and stuff and like, dude, your body is insane. Right. Thank you, brother. No. And I mean, I'm, you know, I say that, you know, in, in total, you know, just admiration um, as a person of male physique culture and stuff, you know, it's not homo, even though I'm probably like 30% gay. No, I'm just <laughs> um, But no, I mean like you have an amazing body. And so like, obviously, you know, you're an older dude now. You're how old are you now? 39. Yeah, exactly. So you're almost 40, right? Like I'm, I still got you, bro. I'm like 10 years older. Than you. Wow. 10 like, years. But, but the reality, the reality is, is that you, me, your beautiful wife, we prove that you age is just a number. Yep. How you treat your physical, right? Yep. And obviously, as you guys know, it's spiritual, emotional part too. But like how you treat your physical is just the way you live your life. And yep. you guys with your metabolic flexibility, your keto lifestyle, you know, you guys are beating the system. And, and so even knowing there's so many people out there today that are, you know, destroying their bodies, right? Because you guys know, right? Like all you have to do is just eat food that you don't prepare yourself and it's fucking poison. It's yeah. poison. It's pretty easy. Every angle, every yeah. angle is poison. So to look like you do, it takes work, right? But the reality is it's not work to you guys because it's just part of your day, day in, day out grind. Exactly. How you got to integrate it, integrate yeah, it into your lifestyle. Be a lifestyle. Exactly. So just talk about that lifestyle and how, you know, how suppressing insulin you know, adapting, you know, refueling your body when you know you have a physiological need based on your training adaptations and whatnot. But talk a little bit about that because I think so many people today get lost with, and, and you know, I, we, we talked about this when you guys had me on recently, but like they get lost on this whole idea that like I got to do low carb and it's got to be a certain amount of grams of carbs every day. And if I break it, oh, and right, or and again, oh. apply that to everything else, right? Whether it's carnivore whether it's yep. the fit your macro. I mean, there's a million different diets, right? But it's always about metabolic flexibility. And that's why I've loved you guys. And I've always aspired to like what you talk about. And obviously Ben too. And when, when I first heard you guys talking about this a couple of years ago, I was like, these motherfuckers know what's up. So anyway, just talk <laughs> about that lifestyle and why it allows you to look and feel the way you guys do. Well, I want to start by saying something that I, I told a client that I had last week whose son was such a little angel that bought her the, the console. And it ended up being, we, you know, they pay me for an hour. We stayed on for an hour and a half because she was a sweet woman, man, just a sweet woman. And I, and I, I knew, I knew this was, had to be the first point. And the first point that I told her, and I'll tell anybody right now, hopefully the people listening to this are already past this, but you got to just say it and spread it to your friends is that you have to understand that what you eat and how you live your life is the biggest determinant of your health. And it's, it's so important. And like, you know, for you to even think clearly, because Mike Mutzel asked me like a year and a half ago on his podcast, he's like, do you think that people can do all this other stuff that you guys focus on if they're not eating right? No. And I personally, yeah, I personally thought that you couldn't. Because, I can't. 
Yeah, because I, mean, I can't do it. You know, just one hearing. day of bad eating, you know, you're not thinking straight. You're you're My more anxiety's reactive. Up. Anxiety's up. You're 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 not able to make good decisions. So it poisons your soul. It yeah. does. It poisons your soul. And it's like it's amazing at the same time because you could change it in 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 a matter of days or weeks. You could change it just like that. I mean, epigenetics change every single day. We turn yeah. things on, turn things off. I mean, everything that we come into contact with changes the way our genes express themselves. So the first part is know that how you eat is the biggest determinant. It's never going to come from the pills. It's not like, look, you talk about a bunch of awesome stuff, how to really like, I mean, you coined the term, what is it? Uh, not TRT, um, TOT, T-O-T. you know, TOT, like we're talking about optimization. It's, yeah. and, and, and that's part of it. But what you eat and how you live is the most important. Now, we personally love carnivore. We pretty much eat carnivore all the time, but I personally lately I've, I've done just on two days where I've, I've done like added some carbs in and look at, look at the magic that happens when right. all of a sudden I'm relying on a different type of satiety because I'm getting volume in from the exactly. fibrous foods and the veggies and I'm eating less calories. So we can't just be, I mean, in my opinion, I don't think we should be stuck in one thing. I think we should always right. be open. Right. And I think that when we have these principles like that, they tend to carry into other areas of our lives. Like I'm open to eating carbs sometimes. And I'm also open to entertaining new ideas. I mean, I think it's, there's a parallel there. And, you know, they, they just did this. Um, I just read an article. They had like the 10 um, factors or the 10 attributes that the smartest people in the world had. And like three of them had to do with keeping an open mind yep. and being able to learn more things. So, I mean, that's where I would start. What would you say about, I mean, metabolic flexibility? What would you say about... Um, just the other stuff that we talk about, like with regards to nutrition and, and health, like, is there anything that, that you want to say? Um, but like, what do, what do you mean now? I mean, like any other like big bucket things, you know, because I think like people are going to, people are going to know like, okay, if you eat a carnivore diet, what are you eating? I mean, you're eating ground beef, steak, eggs, things like that. And then, you know, we, we do use carbs for performance. Like we, we, we look at foods as fuel fuel and and as tools like right. so if i'm eating sweet like potato yeah, they're, they're levers, levers different levers that you can put yeah pull. yeah um i don't know for me it's this whole thing is kind of like natural because i'm i'm a really intuitive person like really really intuitive even with diet i, I never said that, i said that the very very first moment that we were on the podcast together i was like remember i told you guys i said you guys are like me and monica you guys are very blessed because she has very powerful intuitive energy but anyway thank, I didn't you. thank you i, I sense that yeah well, yep. thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you say that because it kind of just confirms what I, because you know, some people want to like. Well, you get confirmation daily. When well, I get confirmation a lot because I, I, I'm all right about a lot of stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> right. like, especially like when I first meet people, like the first impression <laughs> that I get, like, and I'm, and I'm patient too, like, because I'm intuitive, but I'm also patient. Like I never judge it right away. I'm yep. just like, noted, you know, yep, that's awesome. but, um, you know, when it comes with food, you know, uh, I do stick with carnivore for the most part just because I feel the best. But sure. you know what? There was a point there with my cycle and stuff where I do introduce carbs. Right. Uh, I know which ones to do. Um, or even for performance, I'll introduce carbs. Um, and, uh, you know, some days, like, I don't, I don't try to push things. Like, it's true. Like, people get too caught up in these things. Like, yeah. I got fast. You know, I'm going right. to fast. I'm like, <laughs> the minute I say I'm going to fast, I'm already hungry. Like, right. I have yeah. to, if I fast, it has to come natural. Just let it be. And I'm like, okay, I got a good flow. I'm 20 hours in. You know what? Maybe I'll keep going because I feel good right now. But, like, not like, I'm going to do a 40 fast hours. right now. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Like, what if you're stressed? Like, it depends on the day. Like, I can't do a fast if I'm stressed. So I just kind of go with how I feel. But the most part, the most important thing is really, like, you have to have rules. Like, yeah, certain rules for yourself. Like, yeah. non-negotiables. Like, right. uh, you know, like, there's certain things that I probably don't eat ever, honestly. Right. Yeah. I mean, food dies. Yeah, processed like Coke, sugars. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, most, for the most part, most grains. I mean, wheat in general, we probably yeah, cause, touch. Yeah, because I feel terrible. That's the thing. I have a horrible reaction to it. But... You know, know yourself. There's so many tests that you can do and now. That's the thing that I was going to say that you have done and we've both done. And I think it's been so helpful because, you know, getting your genetics done, like absolutely I want to read your genetics, like Anthony J, yep. a friend of ours, right. or, or get a food sensitivity test because like for you, you did the MRT, which is like gold standard. Right. And you know that, okay, if I do want to have carbs because of my cycle, then right. I know that I can't have, what is it? You can't have carrots. You can't have maple. Pumpkin. pumpkin. She's, she's allergic to I'm like to allergic Thanksgiving. to Thanksgiving in general. <laughs> Literally. Turkey. Turkey, maple, pumpkin. <laughs> uh, what else? 
I mean, we, we usually have Thanksgiving. Yeah, there's, it's, there's, it's I usually meat do and chocolate yeah. on Thanksgiving. Yeah. But like, yeah, in general, um, I mean, th- there's so much of what we do, it doesn't fit into a soundbite. Yeah. It doesn't fit into personal, like yeah. top five things that you can do because, and it's hard to get people to think, but that's always our goal. I've always said, like, we want people to think about this. Why don't you try to internalize this a little bit and develop a lifestyle, develop some habits that you, that you're going to follow. Yeah. And then it's always kind of fluid. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, there's lots of things that don't really change, even if we're open to things to change. I mean, I'm not going to be vegan. This is not going to be my thing. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that. I want you guys to save that because we can have, <laughs> but you know, yeah. just my analysis of your guys' lifestyle. And I'm actually, again, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about doing going like kind of carnivore just like all meat and just maintaining my fasting lifestyle so that like on the days I fast which is today you know Tuesday Thursday Saturday Sunday and normally I just eat whatever the fuck I want at night right like I'm not gonna lie like you know you you guys know you have younger kids and stuff like that you know sometimes I'll just eat you know like my wife will make uh, grass-fed hamburgers and she'll cook up you know actual potatoes right usually yeah yeah Yeah. oh yeah I'll eat that she'll cook them in coconut oil Right. Um, yeah, I'll turn that up. Right? That, that thumbs up from us, dude. Yeah, but I mean, like, ultimately, I'm contemplating now going to like a carnivore-based diet, but maintaining my fasting lifestyle. Right. So on my fast days, like today, I might go 18, 19, whatever hours, and then at night, just eat an amazing ribeye or two. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's it like, makes it easy when you're it just actually doing makes it really meat. easy and it's satisfying. It's very satisfying. No, it absolutely does. And so that's what you know. I want to get to veganism and just torch it. But, (laughs) yeah, um, you know, I think it's important for people as we age and you guys know this, um, as your metabolism slows down, you absolutely have to keep your insulin sensitivity as high as possible. Right? You want to maximize your insulin sensitivity. And obviously there's tons of agents that you can use like metformin, you know, you can use, you know, glucose disposal stuff when you're using carbohydrates. But ultimately, if you eat a diet that minimizes your, your insulin production, carnivore, um, you know, a fasting type diet, you know, some sort of supreme low carb, keto, whatever, keto modified. I know there's so many variants. Yep. Ultimately, it just comes down though, too. If you really want to just be a dork, it's just about insulin manipulation, right? Yeah. And when you're wanting to refeed or refuel or reglycogenate, however you want to call it, and you guys obviously are very intuitive, especially you, Mara, you guys just know when you need to refeed. And yep. so that's the most important thing. And then obviously for someone like you, you know, you're, you're well, heavy, heavily muscled guy. You have to, at times, based on your training, re, re-glycogenate, right? But the key yep. is not to over-glycogenate. And that's why you stay so ripped and so lean all the time. So actually, you know what? It's funny, but I, I'm, I'm convincing myself <laughs> that I'm going to go to carnivore and maintain the diet that I have now. I mean, my, my lifestyle, my fasting lifestyle, and just literally just see what happens. And then on my eating days. So, so when you do eat carbs, Danny, like what carbs do you have like post training? Like, do you have specific forms? Yeah. Like I love, I have like a, a list of things that I, I not only enjoy, but I know that based on the way I prepare them too. Cause that's another thing I love right. to do. Like, you know, cooled, cooked and cooled starches, like, sure. um, um, uh, what what is the one that I usually get the the organic um, rice? Yeah, the, basmati the, jasmine. Jasmine, organic yeah. jasmine rice. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, sweet potatoes. I had kaboka squash. I had roasted sweet yeah, potatoes this week. I had. I mean, I'll have. I'll also do like bananas. Bananas, honey. Honey. Um, do you train in the afternoon or train in the morning? Train in the morning. morning. Yeah, and I mean, like for pre workout carbs, if I'm doing a pre workout carb, I love super starch. I know it's corn derived, it's non GMO. Yeah, I think uh, you can. But but I for me it, it it doesn't do anything, and and I know from an insulin and blood sugar standpoint, there's several studies that show nothing with insulin, nothing with blood sugar. But if I want to do like extra carbs, I don't go too high on a pre workout. I'll do like maybe a scoop of you can, which is like 20 grams. And then may, at the most, maybe like a tablespoon of honey. So I'm talking about 35 grams pre-workout is more than enough for me. And in theory, we know about like, we're always using like several energy systems. We're not just like, okay, I'm glycolytic or I'm oxidated. Right. It's, right. it's a continuum. So I'll do that. And I do believe, um, even though I've never seen it like elucidated and I don't need a randomized control trial to tell me. <laughs> don't that, study for that. Oh my, oh my gosh. I don't need that. I need my own personal experience and whatever you want to call it, placebo, nocebo, whatever. If it's working for me, it's working. And post-workout is when I'll do 
a bigger, like maybe like a hundred grams or something. And, and that'll be like a lot of the times, uh, like the Jasmine rice, the sweet potatoes. I, I, I started to hate on them a little bit because of like, when I first started to learn about, um, oxalates, oxalates but yeah. like, you know, then you learn, cause the thing is, that's what happens. But you're not Every, always eating them. That's I'm not. And, and you're eating we, like spinach every day or something yeah like it might be an issue but even then it might not because we all have different genetics we all have different right. epigenetics exactly. a lot of us can clear those oxalates us. out yeah. there's also something that ben sent me a long time ago about um certain types of oxalates and how we how we process them so so, so diamo the guy that wrote the blood type diet he thinks that people like latin of latin descent which you guys both are my wife is my daughter's now um you guys process your blood sugar processes oxalates faster than someone like of the northern, and again, this is his theory, but from northern European Slavic indigenous blood, like that I makes have, sense. Right? It's possible because yeah. they weren't exposed to it. Totally does. Look, you could see a bunch of Jamaicans who are like only eating fruit, exactly. like mostly fruits and some and right. some steak, and they're ripped. Yeah, yeah, and they're ripped. Right, and those so are the type of people climate. They get older, like in their fifties, like a Michael Jordan type. He gets that giant bulge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of that right there yeah. in Philly. Yep. yep. It Definitely. catches up for it sure. It catch catches up. up. But like a lot of the times, like that's why everything, I love the circadian biology stuff. Like I love, yeah. we see how the gut microbiome changes throughout the seasons, right. like the woman's monthly cycle. Like there's so many things that yeah. change. And if, if we're just so, I don't know, just how I view it. If we're so like stuck in one way, maybe we're missing out on something. And maybe all, also because of how strong our beliefs are and because of cognitive dissonance in every area of our lives, we start to think that if we do eat that carb, it's going to affect us the wrong way. And sure and enough, it, it does. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, it does. No, it's true. It's absolutely true. And you guys already said it. And by the way, it's amazing. You, you, that, that's all true. Um, we, our minds do create our reality. Again, yep. it's not the focused intent, yep. right? So you're right. If you believe, like you said, the placebo, the nocebo, they're very real. You know, people take, I mean, why do you think there's a, you know, testosterone boosters is a $2 billion, $3 billion market. You know, guys are buying literally shit that does nothing. And they feel good. But they say, oh, no, dude, my erections are better. I've got, right. you know, I'm shooting 20 foot loads. I mean, it's like <laughs> the, non, the nonsense that you hear from dudes that are, you know, buying testosterone boosters when we know, you know, through massive volum voluminous studies, they're worthless. There's something to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even if they're, you know, again, nothing, there's still that belief as you guys were saying. Okay. So I want to hammer uh, veganism and then we're going to get into journey. <laughs> so veganism it. to me, and I want you guys to talk about it because you're the experts, but veganism to me is a, sh is a sham. Yeah. Anthony J came on my podcast about three or four, actually it wasn't a podcast. It was, I mean, we've done so much work together, but we did a live stream Bye. together to talk about COVID. And, you know, and, and by the way, he was after it because, you know, we've learned so much since then. He was like, dude, we got to take it down because I was wrong on some of the things I said, bro, you weren't wrong. It's an amazing podcast. It's staying know, up. It's but he was basically, yeah. we're, he knows, and we know now too, that there's a form of fungi that grows in the stomach that vegans and people that eat very high carbohydrate diets have that will wipe your ass out if you get COVID. It's something to do with the angiotensin receptors. And oh. again, this, yeah, this, yeah, this. The A2 is, is something exactly. that's interacting with that, it, the ACE2? It germinates in the microbiome. And so if you have right. this, it's, I forget, it's called Brucellus microbella or something. Micro, pro, pro, Prusabella or Prosabella. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll link it in the podcast or whatever. But they know that when you have a lot of that growing in your biome, you're like a, you're a fan of a moth to the flame for this yeah. you know, horrible bioweapon, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. So the bottom line is, is that we're in a post COVID world. We're trying to survive. There's a lot of ways people think that you can survive. Obviously <laughs> natural adjuvants, vitamin C, vitamin D, getting sunlight, you know, obviously being low, infl low inflammation, keeping your insulin down, not eating sugar, all of those things that we all know and love are already, you know, weapons against it. But people that eat vegan diets, are not getting, as you guys know, these crucial minerals, you know, folate, thymine. I mean, there's so many different things, but then there's also the whole idea. And this is what I think is, you know, really smart. And I'm sure you guys know more about this than I do, but that the human got biome evolved over time to animal, animal proteins. And so when yeah. you now deprive it 
of animal proteins, even though you have a 2,000, 5,000, who knows how long we've been around, you know, evolutionary adapt adaptation to eating it. And then you stop giving it. There's a lot of shit that goes wrong in the brain. And obviously there's people out there now that are studying this. Yep. But I just think that most people today, if you choose to be a vegan, great, right? You're doing it for spiritual purposes or whatever. Great. I have no problem. You know, good for you. But you better do it right. And I think you guys know that most people don't do it right. Talk about that. What are they usually eating? They're eating processed shit. Yep. Yeah. Vegans. So I was actually a, a vegetarian for a while. I was never full vegan because, I mean, I probably would have died, to be honest. I felt so bad already. Okay. I had to eat eggs and fish or I was going to literally starve to death. So, um, and the funny thing is, is that honestly, back then, the reason I did it was to be skinny. So that's one, that should tell you one thing is that you- which now I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because um, it's just undernourished. It's basically malnourished because yeah. I was also under eating. But um, yeah. yeah, I was eating, like I go to read the ingredients now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe I used to eat this. It's like those, and you, you know, it's like chicken. Too. It's not even spelled like chicken, like like a chicken, <laughs> chicken burger, chicken, chicken burger. <laughs> uh, and like these veggie burgers. But honestly, here's the problem. And here's the biggest problem with the plant-based movement. Uh, is the fact that I was just doing what I thought was healthy because doctors say it, right. and this is what's being pushed on us. It's a it's a it's a huge agenda because game changers. Just, just follow the money. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and just follow the money. I was sick all the time. Um, I was so depressed, and it turns out, oh my gosh, I ended up now that I have my genetics. Thank God, I'm not vegetarian anymore because my genetics is like there are so many things in my genetics that make so much sense why i felt so bad and one I, that I can't methylate i can't methylate so i was probably so low on folate and b12 my b12 was non-existent i also can't convert uh ala i have to have wow. fish fish oil it can't be ala i can't convert beta vegan carotene. forms i can't convert beta carotene i have to have liver and you have <laughs> you to understand I, mean? I just i don't i'm sorry to interrupt you but i just want people to know that i think it's only like seven to ten percent of us can convert beta carotene yeah, to vitamin. The, yeah, either way. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, you know, you just, you have to eat so much more, you know, and nobody's eating that much broccoli to get that much protein. I mean, if you just look at, look at our digestive system, you know, we're not made to eat plants. We're just not. If you compare us to herb, herbivores, like people love to use gorillas. I'm like, have you seen gorilla gut? They eat 60 you want pounds that? of food a day. I'm like, gorillas have nothing in common with us. Right. Look at their gut, by the way. Is that what you want? You know what I mean? Like our, our gut, I think, has a pH that's like more acidic than a lion. Or a tiger, yeah. <laughs> which, right. which proves that we probably did eat, you know, when we were eating those big, massive animals, we probably ate spoiled meat. Oh yeah. And for we, sure. that's how we were for able sure. to survive. I mean, yeah. there are times I, amazing guy, you got to have him on the podcast, Dr. Bill Schindler. He's a oh, he's archeologist, friend him. of ours. And I love his whole take because he talks about how we're not designed to eat this way or that way. What makes us different is we have these big old brains that yeah. allow us to create tools to process food outside of our bodies so that we can enjoy these plant foods. And, so, and right, thank God for that because there's times throughout history where we almost became extinct, you know? Yeah. And so but like- People need to realize that plants are a starvation food. Yeah. They are a, indeed a starvation food. There's, there's so many things in plants that, that are good, that you can isolate, but then you have to take the good with the bad. And it's like, you know, I can get this out of this plant, but then it comes with this list of things that could go wrong. I've always said, look, just be aware of what that list of things are. And just be conscious and be intuitive and listen to your body because, you know, so many people suffer like way longer than they, than they should. You know, because like, they think it's bad. They think they're going to get cancer. From or they, they, they also or they think the social pressure. Or the social pressure. Like the ethical, the ethical reasons are honestly the worst ones of all because it's actually not ethical and it's not doing what they think it's doing, which is saving the planet. It's actually doing the opposite. So. Yeah. But don't you guys think it's just, and it's a perfect segue to get us into what we really want to talk about today, but it's a scam. It is a scam. It's yeah. another giant movement by big government, you know, big agra, big corporatocracy. I mean, we can go on and on and on, but this, yes, is, big this is big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't worry, we won't leave them out. But big agra is behind this movement. You guys, yes. as you said, follow the money. Look at the people behind Game Changers. James Cameron. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, his soul is poisoned. 
For, for sure. him to go on that show and lie even... through his fucking Hollywooded scandal teeth. Oh my gosh. Disgraceful. Yep. And I've lost all respect for him. For real. You know, obviously, we probably both looked up to him. I mean, as a young yeah. man growing up, you're like, wow, Arnold's the man, right? But it's like, yeah. he's a fucking he's sold out. out. Yeah, he's yeah, sold man. out. Yeah, and, so and it's many... a lie. He's not exactly. lying. He's lying. To always, his... Why don't they publish like you know, like corrections, like, like you, like a responsible journalist would like, Hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger three months after this was, it was, it was eating cracking eggs and I eating raw in his house. And it's laughable. It's and laughable. all these guys that were trying veganism for a week, they're all NFL injured. guys. They, well, half of them quit after the movie was filming. The other half kept going and, and, you know, either are no longer NFL players because they're injured or they got released. We, we should do our own documentary as a follow up to the bullshit. <laughs> sure, okay. Should. So we know, right? Like people that watch us, watch me, they know, they know. We know. They follow us. They know we 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 don't spare any expenses. You know, calling the charlatans out. So it's clearly a scam. But ultimately, and and again, it's a perfect segue to us to move into what we want to talk about. But it's basically a movement to get sheeple who want to you know again be compliant, wear their mask. I should have put about it. I mean, all put our masks on for this podcast. It would have been amazing, right? Yeah, we were looking for. I was my boys had all these masks and they lost. They've lost them because we have a friend who was wearing a Deadpool mask. Yeah, if I have to wear a mask, oh, that would be awesome, dude. Yeah, so I was like, "Where the heck is your Guy Fox mask?" And they just happened to have found it, but they didn't find it the other day. The hacker. Yeah, because we were we were we were going to go to Walmart. Only time that you can actually go into the store now wearing that. And they won't think you're gonna try to like shoot up the place. Yeah, I'm gonna we start were, going in my hacker mask. Think about how big of a joke that is. It's, it's so crazy. And we were we we're going to Walmart and we we're like, I'm going with my whole family. This is about to get crazy. Someone's gonna tell me something about the kids and <laughs> yeah, just going there yeah, to get a freaking board game. Kids. We wanna get a board game to play <laughs> games at home. And uh, I couldn't find the mask, but we ended up all going without masks. And um, yeah, they want you to wear the mask. They want you to, and it's like, it's so weird. Like, I'm like, they're, they're like testing, you know how your kids test you and they see how far they can go? Like when they say, can I have a cookie? Can I have five? Yeah, exactly. you know? yeah, okay. Can, I have can you wear a mask? You can. Okay. Can you, can you, you need to wear an eye patch now. Right. Because right. eye patches are going to keep us safe. And so actually now, you need a microchip while you're at it. Yeah. Say yes. <laughs> and so how can you hear all those people questioning this? Aren't they crazy? Aren't they crazy? Oh, they're so dangerous. And so, guys, you're right. I mean, basically, you're saying that they, you know, they 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 cross our civil liberties just a little bit to test us. They yep. do. And as soon as people don't say "fuck you," mm -hmm. most people are afraid. Yep. Mm -hmm. They just keep crossing the line and keep little by little pulling us back. So, so that's kind of where we're at. So let's just talk about all. And and obviously, I know where you guys are because we talk. Obviously not on air about this, but let's talk about what is to come. Now, obviously we can get our tinfoil hats on and go deep, or we can just like be reasonable, you know, people who are observing reality as it happens. And let's just call it out. We've had six weeks now, starting Monday, it'll be six weeks where we're, we're in, you know, bizarro world. This is fucking yep. bizarro world. No one knows what is going on. Our president gives the governor's like his, their ability to be autonomous and decide what they want to do. But at the same time, they also cross them by saying, oh no, we're giving you specific rules where you have to have a 14 day provable, you know, lowering of like everything, right? They're throwing it all in flus, influenza, COVID. It's a, it's a scam, but they're basically saying that the governors determine my opinion, and I want your guys, and obviously we're going to get to vaccinations and the mark of the beast and the forced chip and all that bullshit in a second. <laughs> but the reality is, is that it seems like, and this is why Trump, and we didn't talk about this, but this is why Trump activated a million United States military people almost three weeks ago. And again, oh it's, yeah, it's, I heard about that. That's very varied, right. But it seems like they're setting up a national government versus a state's government battle. Right. Because some of the states are going to be like, fuck you. My state is going bankrupt. The people have a deserve, deserve the right to go back to work. And the federal government is going to be like, OK, we ex respect you. But if you can't pass this test. So, guys, in my opinion, and I want yours, but my opinion is, is this is what it's going to go to. It's eventually going to get to federal government is going to say, fuck you to some of the states and states are going to be like, fuck you. We can't survive. And then it gets crazy. Wow. So will they ask U.S. military to intervene against citizens of states? That's my question. What are your guys' thoughts about that? 
Well, my perception possible. right now as things are, and I don't, you know, there's so much that we're, we're being given news through 27 filters, you know? So it's like they well, choose. The fake. Yeah, the media is fake. So much of it we is We don't know what fake news is fake. Yeah. Exactly. That's a big part. And yeah. like, let me just tell you guys something. This is very, <laughs> this is not outlandish. Like the CIA was talking about, you know, getting people in the media to write favorable stories in the 40s and it came right. to light in it's the people. 70s and then they said okay guys we're stopping we're not doing it anymore yeah okay please please who are these people can you imagine believing this stuff and, can they you, don't i can't even, even imagine uh, thinking but, that way but let me just say Dude, one I'm thing so far from that i think that what i've seen and i haven't and this is the sad part i haven't seen a lot of governors stand up and be like not in my state i don't know what's going on in texas i'd love to know I mean, like in Georgia, they started opening up, you know, I think uh, gyms and certain things yeah, and people are businesses. losing their minds. Oh, the federal government is already, I, yeah, I know that my family's all in Georgia and this is how I know, but the federal government's already stopping it. They're basically yeah, saying, they already, oh, yeah, they said they didn't agree. No. Yeah, they yeah. said they didn't agree. Now, see, for me, what I hoped would happen, because I, I let me tell you, I didn't vote for Trump, but I, I've seen a lot of what he says, and I just, I'm laughing, and, and, and like, you know, the way he smacks down the media, I love it. I love the way he trolls them, absolutely. But let me just say, like, the way I read it, because I'll give you an example. Sure. We've been watching the, the, the presidential um, the briefings, the briefings for the every day. Like, we've been watching them for like the last week or so. And um, yesterday, there was a guy, uh, I think it was a CDC guy, and uh, Trump was behind him and he's like, we're not six feet apart. <laughs> and the guy was like, he was joking with him. And the guy was like, well, you know, oh, it Mr. President, General, it, was it was a surgeon general. And the president was like, and he, he, he waved his hand like, just it, 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 was it, was Fauci? it wasn't Fauci. No, it, no, it wasn't it was Fauci. Surgeon, it, was it was a surgeon general. Yeah. It was a surgeon general. The guy got, got nervous about it. And, well, because and, he literally tweeted at the end of February, Stop buying masks. It doesn't right. protect you. You don't need masks. So right. people are asking him because now, and he's like, oh, well, 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 you know, at the time we didn't need masks, that, but now you need the mask. Don't wear a mask. Wear a mask. You don't know, don't do mask. this, do right. this. And it's like it changes. And then people, this is exactly what happened in 1984. Like they basically said, we've never been at war with East Asia. And now because they go through the wars and the wars help them, right. the government. And, and, then, and then when they're back at war with East Asia, they say, we've always been at war with East Asia. And the people, somehow... This like this crazy thing that I'm like, I'm, I feel like Roddy Piper and, and they live and I'm like, do you guys put on the freaking glasses? Look at this. No, they don't. So I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, obey. <laughs> like a, they a, obey. a national versus a, versus a, a local government thing is possible. I just haven't seen, I've actually seen the opposite from governors who are like, no, if we don't want to close, if we don't want to open our states up, we're going to fight you. And, and oh, some of these governors are going way too crazy trying to take away guns, guns and, and stuff. Yeah, rights. yeah, yeah. Like everybody's this like, scary. and then the yes, here, here's the seed that was planted yesterday. I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's going to come, it's going to come into light much more. The lady, what's her name? Dr. Burks. Dr. Burks. You guys need to start getting your flu vaccine. Oh, why did we throw flu vaccines into this? And, the flu, that and by the way, the flu vaccine. They've already shown it in studies. It just makes you, you sick. And, yeah. it, and it also makes you more susceptible to respiratory yeah. illnesses like COVID. Yeah. So and by the way, that's just what we know. Exactly. Right. What we don't know is all of the adjuvants that they put in that to, to chip us, to track our thoughts, to brainwash us, to condition us with their, you know. Hey, you're just speaking nonsense. Oh. Conspiracy theorists. Yeah. All of these things are, by the way, all of these things, you can read them, you can talk, like people are investing because this is, seems like so cool that you can have like a nano piece of technology that'll have every single, everything from a person in there, like their exactly. credit card history, their likes, their dislikes, everything. We already know Fauci has a patent on the COVID, uh, one of the mRNA yeah. proteins. Okay, yeah. in the okay. fucking they virus. gave money. They gave money. Yeah, to the Wuhan. Clinic. This is all such a sham. All right, I'm over it. I don't want to get so. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to get so. I mean, we are okay. So all three of us are on the same path. We all know this is a giant scam. We know that none of our "quote unquote" congressional government leaders are have our back. This is some sort of a tyranny or move to tyranny, you know, by the end, you know, this new world order, whoever the demons or the aliens or whatever it is behind our government, they're clearly moving us to a world of less freedoms. Yep. So what do people like us do right now? I know all three of us are going to say, fuck you over my dead body. Are you going to vaccinate me or my kids? 
But what do we do to block it? I have an, I have, go, go ahead. What? I was, I saw you were about to Oh, I was our, oh, okay. Well, we've thought of that because that's where I was thinking. This is, I mean, we know this is where it's going. They're talking vaccines, oh, absolutely. Talking microchips, digital. Guys, they already gave us yesterday. You don't know this. They gave us the plan in California yesterday. My buddy works in the government up in Sacramento. Yep. He sent me a link. It's on San Francisco gate. That they're, you know, not public, but it's on the government thing. And it's basically, they're going to mandate that you get checked to see if you have the virus and then- Yeah, if you want to go back to work or if you want to travel, yep. Okay, right, they're if you want to go back to work. Checked. They're not gonna they're not getting it. Well, I already told Danny, checked. he's gonna have to, we saw some videos of what's going on in China. Uh, we they're saw gonna, some terrible some really, footage. Really, really bad footage. Uh, those supposed hospitals that they have there are prisons. And the people uh, are being they're cementing, right. they're cementing people into their homes. China's evil, guys, just get over I know, it. But imagine that, right? You gotta get forced to be checked. You literally could be an asymptomatic carrier, never ever have it, but because you have the antibodies, they're gonna label you as part of having COVID and you're right, then you're in prison. You don't even know what happens to you at that point. Yeah, because they're, because they're talking about tracking, what do they call it? Like following, um, following like whatever the, the, whatever the policy is, that's that's really hard yeah, to do with a, with an illness like COVID. I, listen, I, if it's if it's coming to all of us, I don't know where we go, guys. But I told my wife last night. I swear to God, as she was laying in bed, I said, Monica, if this comes to fruition in the next two day two yeah. weeks, the girls are not coming back to California, and I'm packing and I'm literally leaving, and I will never pay a single yeah, fucking bill, about it. and I will go up into the wilderness and Flagstaff. I already have a Flagstaff. That's a great. Place. That's a great one. Yeah, I already have a place where I can go right now. I mean, it may just be temporary. I mean, I know I, I, we're sounding crazy, right? But this is the reality of where this reality. United States that's now not the United States. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. But we are losing our freedoms, guys. And if we are going to be forced into this complacent, servile, you know, tyranny, it's like a technocracy of they tell you what to do and you do what you are told, then I'm out. I will opt out. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. Too. And I want to tell everybody, this is something that's a very actionable thing that has existed. And I love it because people don't know about it that much. They don't think about it. But we had, the, my, my boys are Cub Scouts. And we had a judge on, um, like he came to visit us and talk to us. And I was like, they were having any, any other questions? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was so excited because I wanted all the kids to learn this word. Yeah. Can you explain jury nullification? And then he's like, interesting. I never get that question. I'm glad to. And so jury nullification is one of the best forms of civil disobedience. And it's just the concept that if we were to, for example, we would be the biggest nightmare to like a prosecutor who's prosecuting someone. We wouldn't even get selected. But let's say somehow yeah, we found us. our ways on to our way onto a jury and the prosecutor and they're asking us um, and they're, they're convicting a guy for something like a nonviolent drug crime where they had possession or something like right, that. Right, that we don't agree with. If we don't agree 90% with that. 90% of prisoners, by the way. Right? It's yep. huge. We, that's why we have the biggest per capita prison population okay. in the world. And, and, you know, we could choose to be like, you know what? Uh, no. Yeah, no. Uh, no. And, and nullification, and what happens when there's enough cases with nullification, it's an indicator that the, system. the, 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 the law at, at, at hand or the law you know, at issue is, yeah. is not just. And so what I say to you guys, what you I say to, to the listeners up. is do not turn in your neighbor. That's the first step. Don't snitch on your freaking neighbor because someone told you to be scared of them because they want to keep the, the lights on in their house and feed their kids. That's where it starts. You don't have to, we're not trying to start a revolution or incite violence because that's the first thing we're going to be accused of. We're just saying, you know what? Just don't snitch on your neighbor. And from there, if you want to do something else, then do what they tell you not to do because it's the right thing. Not because, it's wrong. because you have to go to work. I mean, if someone's telling you you can't go to work anymore and, and, and you're, you want to open your business back up and they tell you it's non-essential because that's what they said. Alcohol is essential, but you know, these other <laughs> liquor stores are, are essential. So is Walmart. Yeah. Let's keep them. Let's keep them eating the packaged foods. Keep right. the Walmart stocked, right. keep the alcohol, like the liquor oh, store please. stocked, and, and don't let like Joe from down the street. Who's like, just trying to whatever his business is. So I say, I say eventually it's got to get to a point where, where people say, you know what? I'm going back to work. I've had enough. That's yeah. it. That's the, that's where it starts. Well, all of this only works by compliance anyways. Exactly. We outnumber them in the end. It's just that they've done a really, 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 really awesome job at indoctrinating people yep. through our school system. 
where they teach you how to obey orders. Yep. You stand in line and the little bells go off and you have to raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. To use the restroom and you're like 18 years old. And then all of a sudden the next week you have to decide your whole life. So of course we've got like all these like freshmen who are like in having college. panic attacks because and they're not prepared. Record number of psychological visits. Like yep, and, record number. And, and, and crisis, all that with visits. The crisis visits. So like for us, the first step I think is, is of course, speak up too. Like, speak like, up. You know, I've been starting to do that, and and you see, guys, it like how things go viral. Yeah, things things like this go viral too. Like where you're like, oh, I didn't know Maura and Danny thought that. Yeah, and they do. <laughs> right now, it's like whispers. Like right now, it's DMs. Like I just want to say, I've gotten a million oh, I have of these. So I just want to say thank you so much because yeah. we didn't know where you guys stood, but let me tell you, our family thinks this, this, and this, and I'm right. like, right. have you seen so this? Have you read relieved, this? You know? And they're like, oh yeah, we have. That's awesome. My audience doesn't have to worry about that because they know. <laughs> they know I've been like screaming about the aliens for years. But, but, but seriously, guys, I mean, first off, deeply honored, humbled, privileged for you guys to come on the show today. I think that you're, you're, you're courageous, you're clear, um, you're heroic. You know, that, that, that's how I look at stuff like this because very few people are willing to say this. But I don't want to end. Are you guys okay to keep going a little bit? Because yeah, let's go a little bit. besides yeah. solutions – you know, which is to speak up and to not be a slave, right? Yeah. What's coming next, right? Like, let me give you this. So my wife and daughter, my bonus daughter, Monica's daughter, her oldest daughter, remember I told you guys she's like an all-American soccer player. Yeah. So she's, they're driving down to her school in San Diego today because they think it's toast. There's an article in the Wall Street Journal two days ago that they're already suing this, you know, student of across the United States are suing the universities now because no one's going to pay 50, 60, 40, $30,000 a semester to sit in front of a fucking Zoom call. Think of that. Oh, the universities right. are toast. They're so toast. my wife is driving down there right now with her. Her name is Alana. And they're going to take pictures of her in her uniform. They even got it from the coach and stuff like that. And, and you do whatever she can down there because the likelihood that that college may go down because it's Point Loma in San Diego. It's a very distinguished. 56, actually, it's like 60 grand a year in state, right? Oh my top gosh, wow. two, It's one of the top Division two women's soccer programs in the country. Wow. And it's this amazing school. She was being recruited by a ton of D1 schools, but she was like, why would I go anywhere when I could be on the beach in San Diego and go to yeah. this? Heck yeah, man. So anyway, it's probably gone. So anyway, I give you guys that back story. So, you know, for the audience stuff, because guys, the world is going to change dramatically. Yeah. And most people can't, again, multidimensionally see because they're so programmed to go from A to B, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you really are looking at things, the world's changed for permanently forever. It's already and, changed, yeah. And, yeah. You know, and we talked before the show started about like what's gonna happen to financial systems. So in just the last you know, four or five, six minutes that we have on this, I want you guys both to give me your opinion, like where do we go? We all know that we have to build the new earth. We have to build a better world, but how do we do it? And just kind of give me your perspective on like what you see happening. Gosh, man, I, I really like if it was, it's, it's, it's like we're bipolar right now. We have good days and bad days, good yeah. moments and bad moments. Yeah. Like today is a day where I don't have a lot of hope, but yeah. tomorrow, hopefully I will. But so let's just say from a, from a regular everyday standpoint, I have hope because so many people, what do you think people are going to do? This is what we talked about before we got in there. What do you think people are going to do if they're stuck at home? They're going to start like, just digging into stuff and they find themselves like down a crazy rabbit hole. And I've been down several. <laughs> yeah, we've been down so many. So now, like, like you said, with this other stuff, like, what do we do? Do we, do we accept it? Do we, um, do we believe it is true or do we, do we believe it is true and do nothing or do we speak up? I think the first thing to do is just start like, when you talk to your friends, you can't just all of a sudden hit them with like the final chapter. You got to be like, <laughs> you know, like yeah, you can't just send them the cabal. Like, what do you think? <laughs> like, what do you think? Isn't it weird that they said this and then oh and then this gosh. happened? Or don't you think it's weird that they said this and then this happened? And like, start to think well, about. Well, look, I, I started DMing. Doubt. I started DMing like, like if I see, you know, what's better, guys, than commenting because comments are for it's everyone to sphere. see and it's yeah. in the public sphere. So I had a friend and especially if you value your, your relationship with them, I had a friend basically um, talk about the protesters, like, Oh, these, they're like toddlers throwing a fit. Okay. And I, I messaged her and I go, I'm going to protest eventually. I just want you to know this because it's not right. Yeah. I'm like, there's certain things, maybe you don't agree with the protesting, but it's still our right. Yeah. And 
what they're doing is not right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, and I don't, you don't, you know, again, do you have an income? Like there's a lot right. of people here. Like, right. like if you're, yeah. if you're talking crap about the protesters, do you have an income? Well, don't, don't you, you guys know. think though, just for both of you, and then you wrap it up with your comments, it really does come down to the people who, who think the government is helping us. And then guys like us that know that it's a scam and it's always been a scam. Always. They're just, they're just there as an intermediary for us, people of like mind and creative, you know, conscious streams of thought to work around them. So isn't it really just, that's the divider. You're either like the government is, is for my best interest or you're like us and you're like the fucking government is just there to keep the system running, but they're not actually for us. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And, and like, where do the people think they get this money from? Right. I don't know. <laughs> like, <us. laughs> I know, dude. Yeah, because a trillions of dollars just falls from the air. Yeah. <laughs> like, I are mean, you guys serious? Like, how can our people kids. not? I mean, everything. Look, we were talking about this the other day. Like, everything is fake. Like, everything. everything. If you think about our life, like, even like, like, look, like our medicine cabinet. It looks fake. It's like these little pills that look like little candies, and we got our little things. Yeah. Like, we live this fake life. Like, it's just, it's really cre creepy, guys. Yeah, it's like the Lego movie where they, they like all the wake movie. up every day, and they're I like, mean, everything is awesome. awesome. Yeah. And, like, you go to work, and, like, I mean, look, I, I just, I would hope, and I, I have faith that, that this could happen. I don't know if it would hit critical mass, but, I mean, the fact that there's enough people to wake up and just be like, hold, hold, hold up. Yeah. Like, like what the hell has just gone on for Wait the past? A minute. Wait, I can't believe a minute. like my whole mean? life. Like, how did I not see this before? Okay. It's fine. I didn't know certain things. My first son that I knew my second son and we changed the, we changed what we do. When you know better, you do better. Right. I mean, so, I mean, like, I think that it's like when we learn more, they turn up the heat more. Now it's like, okay, we, we have five fires right now. Um, there's one over here where people are questioning Bill Gates. There's one over here where people are questioning the who. There's one over here. We got to quell all of them. First of all, Bill Gates is awesome. Trust the who. You know, and it's like the, the counter information and the misinformation and, and like marginalizing people oh who God. question things. Did and you see the CDC, by the way? <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up Bill Gates because we had to get one fuck you to Bill Gates. And oh, dude, he's absolutely. The worst. I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm, he's a demon. He's a demon. He's a eugen. He's a eugen uh, eugenist. Eugenicist. Yeah, yeah. Eugenicist. And he has stated publicly, publicly, because these people can't even hide it sometimes because they're so used to talking this way. Well, a lot of the th a lot of the times you have clearly, to publicly say things. Well, he's clearly to make stated, yourself known. Well, you like, guys know what happened yesterday. Right? Everything they hacked. They hacked everything. Yes, 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 yes it came out yesterday. I know. Yeah. I have just, to make, it's just a matter really of time. Like it'll be like you know because people have to go through all the records. But within the next, I'd say thirty six to forty eight to seventy two hours. Some stuff's gonna come out yeah. yeah okay so let's wrap up the show first off this has been amazing and i again oh we could be here forever heroic yeah. to do this because not many Thank people you. will come on with me and talk the way you guys do so i mean i send you tremendous love and light Thank you for being Thank you. authentic and transparent but for our kids obviously it's now a time it's now or never yep and people like us are gonna resist we we you know it's like i say on my tweet tweets i do not consent Right. So all three of us are going to be that way. And, and we're obviously we're being good parents and leaders, but at the same time, we're showing that we can resist this tyranny. Yes. So ultimately my, my final say, and you guys get the last two is, and then I'll you know, share how people can work with you guys and stuff. But you know, my final say is for our children and for people of like mind, we must remain firmly committed to be remaining empowered, sovereign, and free. Yes. That's, that's it. And, and, and nothing else. And, if and talk to your kids about all of this stuff. Make sure they know, like, make yeah. sure they're paying attention. My kids attention. are woke because they've just, it's been. Of course. A we really talk to our time. kids. You guys talk yeah. to your kids. I it's talk to my kids. My important. kids know all this. My daughter's been with her mom for the last five days and she FaceTimes me twice a day and she's like, dad, is there anything new that's happened that I should know about? Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's they trust cool. us. And you know what? They are watching and it's good for them to see us get angry about this sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they should see us be angry about it. It's not right. You know what I mean? I like, told him it's yesterday. It's not right. I said, listen, you're part of a generation that is, it's, it's an unprecedented thing that's happened. And you cannot forget this. You can't just be like 20 years later and be like, oh, they'll never do that. You better not be that guy. I told him that because like, yeah. you know, in the forties when they just, 
like shut in like how many thousands of, of Japanese Americans that, that weren't even like Japanese and they put them in, in camps. Yeah, you know? man's like, in our, man's in our, yeah. yeah, we didn't even freaking talk about that. We don't talk about that stuff. And, you know, don't let it be swept under the rug. I mean, now you got, you think, oh, the media is going to help because, you know, we're in this connected world. No, the media are in their pocket. So like now you got to look at alternative media and, you know, just, just start digging. Yeah. Just start and keep dig. an open mind. Keep yeah. an open mind to anything. Anything is possible. Yeah. You guys, phenomenal podcast. If somebody wants to connect with you, work with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, they can email us, hello at fatfuel.family. Our, our website is fatfuel.family. That's where the, the podcast is. She is Fatfield Mom on Instagram. I'm dannyvega.ms on Instagram. And if they want to see what the kids are doing, what they do with the homeschool and how they're um, getting new skills during this period and what they're doing, Fatfield Kids on Instagram. So I didn't ask you if all of us have to leave Calif uh, California. It's all the same. The, the United States. Where are we going? Where are we going to build our? We enclave? can't say it on we air. We can't say. We, can't be we already know. We I'll kind of have an idea. We, I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. Sorry, Because we've been saying it too much, and we're like, you know, I, oh, we need I already to stop told Danny. You, you know me. Danny's yeah. an overshare, and I'm, I'm an like, overshare. You better stop telling people yeah. where we're going because this it's is all good. You know what? I shouldn't have asked you. All right. Well, listen. No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. No, no, I know you guys already have. I know where it is. I just wanted you to get. I wanted you to say it, but you're right. I don't want you to say it. No, I don't. Sorry, guys. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, it, <laughs> only for select people. But uh, again, mad appreciation for you guys coming on the show. Obviously, for everybody watching this, please support the amazing people that come on the show. Go to their website, fatfueledfamily.com. Follow both of them on Instagram. And remember, raise your vibration to yes. optimize your love creation. We'll see you guys very, very soon.